All right, how I built my gas fire video number three. We're going to be talking about piping systems. The piping is going to connect your gas fire to the cyclone, cyclone to the filter drum. Um, really, you can use pretty well anything you want to uh, as far as piping goes. I chose automotive exhaust uh, for several reasons. Um, this is two inch automotive exhaust. It's nothing special. Um, one of the reasons I chose automotive exhaust is because it's readily available at, at literally thousands of automotive parts houses. Just about any place that sells auto parts is going to have exhaust pipe in various diameters. Um, they'll have pre-bent parts, um, reducers. Uh, it's readily attainable. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, in this particular system, I bought five foot two inch straight pipe and three 90 degree bends, um, which saves time. It's pre-bent. Now, one of the mistakes I made in my earlier videos, and I'm surprised nobody called me on it, was uh, these 90s, they come pre-bent with one end belt. That was the mistake I made on my other video. I called it flanged. It's, it is not flanged, it is belt. And what they do is they take that pipe, they slip it over a, a, a machine that actually expands it out so that the the two inch will slip over another two inch pipe. And that makes it really, really handy for welding. Um, you slip the two together and just weld it out. Now, if somebody wanted to save money, save time, if they're not confident in welding, uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident that you could just put a nice, big, thick bead of RTV orange high temp silicone inside the belt end and slip the two together and let it harden up. And I'm sure that that would seal every bit as good as welding. Uh, it wouldn't be as durable if you were, you know, for instance, dragging this thing around the garage floor like I do. Obviously, you know, if it's not welded, there's a chance you could break that silicone and it'll have an air leak. Uh, so, you know, one of the reasons, again, I said I, I got, I decided to go with automotive exhaust is it's readily available, it's inexpensive. If you buy the pre-bent parts, they're already built to slip together and weld. Um, Another reason is it's thin. It's it's fairly thin, uh, and it the thinner a material is, the easier it'll dissipate heat. So you know, although this is a piping system, it's also a cooling system because it's relatively thin. The thicker you go, the less heat loss you're going to have, and the hotter your gases will stay through the system. Um, and the third reason I chose automotive pipe. Uh, exhaust pipe is because it's for some reason I mean it's raw steel I can't explain this but for some reason it lasts a very long time and a classic example of that is I have a, a 2000 Toyota it has the factory exhaust on it it's never been changed since today is New Year's Day it's 2012 so that exhaust in my truck is 12 years old it has never been changed it's subjected to extreme temperature changes, hot, cold, hot, cold, every day, multiple times a day for 12 years, and it has never rotted out. And again, it was it's raw steel. It's unprotected. It's not even painted. So that's a testament to the longevity of automotive exhaust pipe and another reason why I decided to go with it. Um, so going back to the whole thermal dynamics thing and heat transfer, Anywhere that steel is welded to steel, the heat will transfer. Um, not as well as if it were one continuous piece, but it'll still transfer. Um, which brings me into the next part of my piping system. Down here, I built this flange. Uh, I talked about it before. It was three inch flat bar. I cut it three inch long, drilled four matching holes in it and a, a two inch hole in the center, and basically built, built my own flange. Um, you can buy exhaust pipe flanges already made with the gaskets that you weld in place if you wanted to. I was trying to do this on the cheap, so I built my own. Now, here's something I would recommend and would change next time around. Instead of building a flange for this to bolt together here, what I would do is I would have left a one-inch gap in between these two pipes. I would have went to an automotive store and bought two-inch automotive radiator hose, a foot chunk or whatever. And what I would have done is I would have taken that automotive hose, I would have cut a four or five 
five inch piece of it. I would have slipped it onto here with the hose clamp. I would have slipped it over the bottom with the hose clamp. Now this accomplishes two things. Uh, one of those, it's less weld. Uh, you know, it's one less thing on the gasifier you have to weld. Uh, it's an airtight seal. It's, it's very heat resistant. Most automotive thermostats are 185 or 195 degrees. And my gas is well below that. It's around 85 degrees in this pipe. So temperature wise, the, the automotive radiator hose would work wonderfully for this. On top of that, it provides a rubber buffer or an insulator, just like the lid of this cyclone filter did. So what's going to happen is this pipe may be 86 degrees, but as soon as you hit that, that rubber, it's going to act like an a insulator, and the heat will not transfer through the rubber like it does the steel, resulting in a much cooler pipe and, and gas going into your sawdust filter. So that's one thing I, I would do different, I think, on the next one. Um, not to mention it's easier to build because all you got to do is cut a piece of rubber hose and put on hose clamps. Uh, but also because it would cut down on the thermal transfer from the steel to steel pipe. So that's it on the, the piping system. Um, I wouldn't go too small on it. There, I, I don't think there's any such thing as too big, but I definitely wouldn't go, if it were me, this is just my opinion, I wouldn't build a piping system smaller than two inch. And this gas fire again was built for a 15 horse motor. so. I would not, I would pay attention to the, the size of the motor you're going to run and look at potential intake diameters, you know, um, and make sure that your piping system is not smaller, smaller diameter than the maximum intake hole would be on whatever engine you're going to run. Most 15 horse engines are going to run, you know, their, their intake or the, the path of, of air through the carburetor is going to be an inch or less. Well, that's two-inch pipe, so I'm at least double what the maximum size engine this, this gas fire can run. Um, 